just want to jab a little bit more about the uh, uh, debt removal uh, that we had uh, worked on before we, uh, we sat down for lunch. Uh, some of you all have noticed uh, this form laying up here. And uh, what this guy is all about is uh, this is a, uh, a, a lamp back uh, made from a John Brown lamp back, like so. And uh, the uh, the purpose for this is twofold. One is that it's a uh, it's a qualifier, you know, to say yes, sir. Those uh, those surfaces that I repaired, they're back where I want them to be, where they need to be. The other thing is that this stuff's pretty durable, and it acts as a uh, a dolly. And so uh, we've all seen it where uh, you know you're you're taking real good care of your parts, but. <laughs> took a took a dent, right? Well, it's gonna be a long time straightening that back out again. And and uh, a, a negative of uh, of working this brass is 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 bending it back and forth. You want to make sure that you're uh, you're gonna you're gonna send it home as as close as you can to where it needs to be the first time. And so, in the interest of doing that, uh, this. Uh, this form uh, provides you with a, a dolly uh, that is going to let you, uh, I'll say, do an 80% job of sending this thing back where you, uh, you, you would like it to be. Yeah. Jerry, if I can stick that oh. on the bike Again, this is not going to do a 100% job, but it's going to get it close enough that uh, uh, with a little bit of body English and uh, uh, some sanding, hopefully I can I can recover that uh, that fairly severe dent. <coughs> What's the material that you made the dolly? Um, is it, I'm glad you asked that. I, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself here. This is a uh, this is made out of automobile body filler. Body filler. Okay. Okay. And uh, when you have a, 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 a qualified part that you want to use for a mold like this, um, you're gonna have to put a release agent on this. And uh, <clears throat> it's an exotic compound. No, I'm kidding. It's uh, it's Pam. It's a spray stuff in the, <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> Seriously, from your wife. <laughs> spray this stuff on here. It does a wonderful job. Spray it on there. Let it sit for a little while. Let it run down. Let it uh, sort of uh, thin itself out and uh, start wiping this Bondo on it. Initially, you want to put on like, a, like an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch coat just to get it to stick. Um, the stuff tends to cavitate pretty badly. Um, so uh, the thinner that you can put it on there, the better that you can control that. Okay, you get that eighth inch or so on there. Now you can start building it up and uh, putting a backing with it. Here I used a uh, exotic uh, four by four, and uh, this is probably a you know a, a quarter quart of a uh, bond over here. I don't know what that cost, twelve bucks or something. Uh, so it's uh, you can make a couple of these. Uh, let's say you had a really badly damaged part, and uh, you're really going to be laying into it here and. Uh, these these things definitely uh, act as a as a dolly, but not indefinitely. So uh, make yourself a couple of them, and uh, they're throwaways. It's great. Thank you. Yes, sir. So with that said, I'm just going to I'm going to ease this uh, the worst of this uh, this infliction here back out, and that's going to give me a fuss. So. Uh, Piece of wood here and send it home. And because that uh, that form is, is so concise, uh, I'm taking my metal back to uh, the surface that I desire, or just a little bit below that. Again, minimizing the amount of time and the amount of uh, abuse that I'm going to put on this part to get it back where it needs to be. Scott, are you hitting right on top of the crease? Yep. Yep. Again, just just uh, trying trying to uh, hit it as few times as I absolutely have to because every time you hit it, you're you're thinning out the metal. 
I mean, even with that soft hammer, uh, I want to leave as much surface there uh, to work with as I can possibly get. And we're not going to uh, spend the time to absolutely make this wonderful, but I'll get it real, real close here real quick. I just, I, I just want to see that metal start moving, and uh, you can, you can kind of uh, gauge by where you're able to move it, where your, your best strategic next shot is. And if you look at this mold after we're done here, I invite you up here to take a, take a gander at it. Uh, this, this work is not phasing this mold at all. This is really, really durable stuff. movement that's going on here, but I can feel it. <laughs> and I got, uh, I got a pretty good recovery of that already. Watch that. Uh, I can actually watch the bar just just spread this this dent right out of here. identified I go back to the uh, back to this mandrel and just start working them out just lay your thumb on top of the uh, the metal directly above where your mandrel is you feel that material lift up you know you're there okay you're feeling that with your left thumb that's right okay yeah, yeah. <clears throat> And I can watch it. I mean, you're, you're not seeing this over there, I'm sure, but uh, 
I can, I can just watch the light working its way around on us to say, yep, so the dude is moving exactly where the where the force is. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Demonstrated. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right, um, I had put together a, uh, a bullet items list of, uh, of disassembly, and uh, before I get into this, Joe, I want to I want to step back to a, uh, a discussion we had a little bit earlier about tinning, and uh, and why, why the tinning is necessary. Obviously, um, you know, you when you clean the brass and and apply flux to it, my assumption is I ought to be able put those two parallel pieces together and drop solder in there and everything ought to be wonderful. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> and so uh, you're hedging your bed a little bit by tinning the brass and, and tinning is just making sure that before you put those pieces together you've got an adhered layer of the, the solder on both parts. Um, it's going to minimize the amount of solder that you have to plug into the seam to put it back together. and. Hopefully it's going to minimize the amount of mess and, and it, you've seen sloppy repairs before where the, the, the solder is just spilled out the sides and, and looking nasty. Um, tinning is a, is, is a preventative in my opinion to that. Um, as much uh, as uh, uh, tinning the, these, these parts is important, uh, being able to order where the solder is is, a, is equally important. Yes sir. You just talked about where the solder spills out onto the brass. How do you clean that off and get back there to the um, There it I, is, right there. <laughs> I flash it. I got, I'll put a uh, put a wet rag on the back. Uh, if I can get to the back, I'll put a wet rag on the back and I well, work directly side, onto the solder. That's the piece I brought. I, I was asking you about the solder, the horn there, where the solder's running out of the edge. Yes, yes. How do we clean that up? piece of a uh, wet rag up underneath we, we need to be able to access the uh, the area where the solder is we got a we got a portion of the tube that's that's cutting right across that on that part which is going to complicate that a little bit yeah okay well, uh, <coughs> uh, I believe that uh, we could probably uh, uh, Mask this with uh, with with wet rag enough to, to be able to take this off. You want to do it? Uh, yes, I do. But I, I do want to uh, okay. spend just a minute with uh, with uh, our, our good friend Alex here because I'm going to ask him to uh, to do a little bit of demonstration here with uh, with a uh, a torch and uh, yes, sir. When you were talking about earlier, last year I think he was talking about. You actually put the solder on both pieces and then put it together? And you tinning. 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 Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Solder on both pieces. And um, we're talking about bordering uh, the, uh, the solder as well. And, and Alex is going to help us. Alex, it'll be just a second. I've got to get some metal together here for this. But uh, I think we've got a, a couple of sacrificial pieces here we're going to work with. Who, who, is asking about the horn? <laughs> who is asking about the horn? See, I, I had the same question. It, if you look at these real nice pieces of, of you, you can see where they've been soldered together, and you know that together, some of that solder spilled out, and it's not a nice straight line. And that was my another one of my questions. How do they clean that up? So you. There's got to be a way that you, you can use a solder ball when you're doing it. And suck off the excess solder too. Yeah, but I mean, it still stains the. There's still a little bit of solder on it. Do they heat it up and just wipe it off? Then? Heat it up and wipe it off. What do you wipe it off with? Uh, you can use a Scotch spray. Yeah. Um, and, and you do that right. You heat it up and then just wipe it real quick. Yep. Yep. Scotch spray will pick that right up. And uh, you can use a uh, steel wool as well. Uh, obviously, the more aggressive the steel wool, the better. But the more aggressive the steel wool, the more likely you're going to scratch. You're going to scratch and finish up. So uh, um, I, I, I religiously use uh, zero to uh, to triple lock. 
uh, just to just to keep the uh, scratches at, at bay. So then you're using the paper towel to keep the parts. You, you know, once you heat it up, so the parts don't come on solder. Exactly. Exactly. You know, you got that paper towel sitting on top of something. There is no way that solder is going to stick to that part or, or within a sixteenth of an inch of that part. It so just can't keep it from coming apart. On it. Just can't. Yeah. With a horn, you tape up one end, but with a horn, you tape up one end, still. So uh, we're, we're going to want to do a nice, neat, uh, nice, neat solder pass on this, and we want the solder to stay underneath the joint. We don't want to see it spilling out, so we're going to tin the part. Uh, I knew when I looked at those lines. Ease this rough edge down a little bit here, so we don't have cuts. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. So this, uh, this part is going to be fastened approximately uh, here and on my, uh, my scrap piece. And I want to, I want to keep that, uh, the solder uh, as, as invisible as possible. Uh, I'm going to do two things to make that happen. One is I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that where I scuff this uh, bottom piece up, I have a pretty good idea of where that's going to happen. I just marked it here for the heck of it. Uh, in order to uh, see to it that my uh, my sandpaper is not scuffing up an area that I don't intend, I'm going to go ahead and mask it. And the idea there is that the solder won't stick to what you didn't scuff. Well, it, it's got less potential to. The problem with the solder is that, uh, again, it, under the best of circumstances, you, you think that, uh, I would think that when, when you lay it down in a certain area, when you prep a certain area, solder's gonna stay put on that. It's not, it's, it, it's got a mind of its own. And, uh, but uh, we try to minimize that with a couple of things. And, and, and one of those uh, uh, measures is, uh, is copper tape. This, this stuff is used for making uh, stained glass windows, uh, the, uh, what they call a foil construction window. And uh, you can lay a strip of this down, and, and we know the solder is going to go for that copper before it goes for this brass. And so uh, that helps out a little bit too. Uh, but we're going to uh, we're just we're just putting our uh, uh, our scuff and our, our flux down uh, on a target area here uh, to try and contain it. And our friend Alex here is going to show us how well that works or doesn't work. You're just using plumbing or uh, chaining masking tape. Whatever you got. Yeah. I mean, it could be duct tape. It could be masking tape. Because uh, it'll clean it, off anyway. Adhesive tape is probably not going to work. But. All right. All right. All right. Now I'm just uh, trying to straighten this piece out a little bit so it sits down as, as parallel as I could possibly get it. So you're using the tape to control the flow of the solder? Uh, no, no, I'm using the tape as a uh, as a board uh, because I'm going to, uh, I've, uh, I've run my abrasive over it and my abrasive stopped right there at that tape. And then I'm going to give it a wipe here with, uh, with flux. Actually, my friend Alex here is going to do that. And this uh, this is not the flattest piece of, uh, of brass here, so this uh, this is a, a little lumpy, but it, I think it's going to work for what we're going to demonstrate here. So what we're going to do, Alice is going to put a, uh, a pass of flux on both of these pieces. We're going to put them together. We're going to put clamps on this, or I'm, I'm sorry, we're going we're to put a, a, a quick pass of solder on here. Uh, we're going to put clamps on this, and then we're going to throw a little bit of heat to it and see more quality of a, of, a, of a bond that we've got and, and how well that border has been maintained. Just uh, now trying to knock the rough edge from my uh, snips off of this brass to get this to lay as parallel as possible. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. 
All right, Alex. Come on over here. I want you to uh, just take this paintbrush here and just run a, run a pass of this alongside this piece of tape right there. Don't get it on you. Wow, I didn't think I was in the way, but that's what That looks pretty good. So let's, uh, let's give it just one more swap there. And now we need to do this one too. Just run that right down that, that edge right there. Fantastic. All right, let's get this out of the way. I'm going to uh, put these two pieces together just like this. Okay, I'm going to fasten these together and I'm going to put some clamps on here. Uh, uh, you got a side or? Oh, We're going to go ahead and use this point one diameter solder. And what we're going to do is get all, everything flammable away from the scene of the crime. Okay. 
Yes. And now what we're going to do is to, uh, we're just going to heat up the uh, metal where that seam is. And I'm going to push down on it with a metal piece right here to get it sealed together. And when I say okay, so I'll just back up with it, hold it up like this, and turn it off. Push like that, and it goes off. Good job of uh, containing the, the solder. Uh, that's uh, that's a little messier than we would like, and uh, the, uh, the cleanup job from that point is uh, if uh, the uh, Scotch Bright is not going to cooperate with us, that uh, we come in here and take it off with a, with a piece of the two twenty.
Okay, so it's a it's kind of a ratty looking edge, but uh, uh, point point is that uh, we've got a, a a substantial solder seal in there that's not going to come apart, and uh, we were able to contain it under the edge. We got a little sloppy down here, but uh, you get the idea.